One of the important takeaways of this lesson is to really see how Merkle trees are very performant even as n, the size of your input, increases. So to start, here we have a very simple small Merkle tree consisting of four items, right? A, B, C, and D, and they all hash upwards until a final tree root node hash is constructed, right? Even at such a small scale, the number of elements that you'd need to construct a Merkle proof is just half of n, right? You just need two. So say you want to prove that item B existed in this tree root node hash, you would only need A and the hash of C and D in order to successfully construct that proof, right? So this is simple. This is a small one. Sure, we get some efficiency here. But as our trees grow in size, so for example here, now we have a tree of n equals 8. Even, even despite the fact that our tree grew by 2, now we have 2 times the number of elements, our proof elements needed only grew by 1. And that that holds across all, you know, even if you do n equals 16, you only need one more proof element, and so on and so on, right? So they are actually super efficient as your input size grows linearly. So as you're adding more transactions and, you know, saving those transactions from needing to be committed individually into each block, as you're adding more transactions into a Merkle tree construct, the size that the size of or the range of the of the items that you need to construct further Merkle proofs only increases at a logarithmic pace relative to the linear growth of your input. So that's one of the cool takeaways of Merkle trees.